about the Parent and Family Resource. Aloisa shares her thoughts about the Parent and Family Resource, the intended audience of the resource, as well as principles, self-reflection questions and experiments that parents can begin in their family. Presented on the 4th of March 2021 at 9am in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello and welcome, my name is Eloisa. I'd like to introduce you to a series of videos that I'm making that I'm calling Parenting Principles. And these are, the folk, main focus is on relationships between adults and children. Uh, you don't have to be a parent as such to watch them or to benefit from them. In fact, because it's gonna be about principles, I feel like anyone would benefit from being a child to being a grandparent to being someone who's never had children but who has been a child of parents. So the um, principles that I am using are taken from the teachings of divine truth as taught by Jesus and Mary Magdalene, or also known as J um, AJ Miller and Mary Luck. And these teachings I've been experimenting with since 2009 by um, applying them sincerely in my own life to myself. I have found that the family dynamic has changed in a positive way. And from when I first wanted to be a parent until now, a lot of um, the feelings that I have about being a parent and a lot of the experience that I've had, I feel quite differently about parenting than I used to um, you know, 11 years ago. So this resource is, as I said, for anyone who's had experience of um, being a parent or anyone who has actually been a child, you know, a um, child of a parent. And it's not just for parents, it's also for caregivers or, um, yeah, it, look, anyone might benefit from it. I feel like the teachings of divine truth, anyone who applies them, you know, it's going to be, it's going to go well for you. Uh, that's my experience and my opinion. Until you try it, you may not agree with that. And until you sincerely apply things and, and actually have the experience of the benefits yourself, you know, won't know that as a fact. I encourage you to keep an open mind. You may feel challenged at some points and you may have some emotions that come up. I encourage you to feel those in a responsible way, meaning not to take them out on other people, particularly if you do have children. Um, it's not their response. Your emotions are not your children's responsibility. They're yours. Even if uh, you get, um, I suppose we could call it triggered or something gets exposed via the children, it's actually you, if you have an emotional response, that's about you, nothing to do with the children. So I do encourage you to focus, to own your own emotions, I suppose is the best way of putting it. That means that, okay, if I have a feeling, that's mine. It's nothing to do with anyone else in the world. It may have been exposed by something else in the world, an event or another person, but the feeling you have is yours and it's your responsibility to work through that. Parenting principles is focused on the family, um, and as I mentioned, specifically between parents and children or caregivers and children. Um, you may not be a parent yourself, but you may have adopted children or um, anything like that. And my, why I've decided to do these presentations is that all of us come from a family, whether that's been one, like you may not have even known your parents, but you still came through parents and may have had parental figures uh, in your life, whether that be siblings or um, people who you, you knew or who might have just kept an eye on you. you there's, we have a legacy of family issues, multi-generations of things that have happened. Often there's similarities between the generations of, say, diseases or issues that come up. Um, you know, there might be family abuse issues, there might be sexual abuse issues, there may be, you know, certain families do certain things. And what I notice is that as a product of our families, we make decisions often based to gain the approval or of the family unit. And when we don't have approval or we might be um, ostracized or I suppose you could say kicked out of the nest or not, not actually um, you know, disapproved of by the family, there's quite a lot of pain and suffering that people go through um, due to that. There's also like, you know, wars on the earth. Mainly they started as family feuds. And if you look at, and that's an extreme example, but they're kind of ongoing and you can almost trace back various uh, disagreements that people have had and then they're still fighting about them, you know, thousands of years later. 
and even in your own nuclear family, so if you've just got you know, parents and children, you'll notice that there's various things that happen where there's arguments and disagreements and all of these kind of things going on. So the family dynamic's quite a complex unit. There's been multi-generations where we've absorbed certain things. Sometimes we want to emulate things in our family. And sometimes these things, you could say, you know, sometimes they might be moral and ethical and sometimes they're not. These presentations are an opportunity to reflect on your own family unit if you are a parent and your relationship dynamics with your own children. Or you can also, if you're a child of parents, you can also reflect on the family unit in that way and apply these principles to, to any situation in your life. The main point of these presentations is about love. And I'm focusing on parents because parents have a responsibility I have discovered to children. And that is to actually be a parent. When I first thought about having children, I didn't really consider what being a parent meant by kind of looking after the children. But that's a very open kind of discussion, I suppose. And I didn't pay much heed to my real feelings or my real thoughts or my beliefs about what a mother and a father do and what a family unit involves. I didn't pay any attention to that until after having children. I would have, I feel like I would have liked to have had some of the knowledge and experiences that I've had after having children. But to be honest, it took me to have children in order to actually even want to review or have some reflection about what was happening in my life. Before that, I was happy just doing my own thing and not really thinking too much or too deeply about various events that had happened in my life and how I felt about those events. So this resource has a lot of self-reflection, which is a skill that I encourage you to develop. Self-reflection is an emotional process. It's how you come to understand yourself and know yourself and uh, find out what you really feel and what you really think. It's a very beneficial process in my experience and I highly recommend it. You can do an intellectual version of just thinking your way through things and um, yeah looking at the, the situations that are happening in your life and sort of you know thinking about about them that's the start that's how I started but I've come to find that the best self-reflection is when you feel about what's happening rather than think about it and you'll notice in these presentations I talk a lot about feelings and emotions rather than intellectual understanding because there is a fact that if, like no change is possible unless it's an emotional change or a soul-based change. And, you know, we are a soul. That is where our passions, desires, thoughts, memories, um, experiences, that's where all of our, our nature and our personality, that's us as our soul. And this physical body and the spirit body, they're just interfaces with the physical world and the spirit world. So, I suppose in a way it's quite lovely really because God's, you know, when you die you don't lose yourself. You're still everything that you are now. You just don't have the physical body. You have the spirit body to interface with, with the spirit world. Um, so your soul is the thing that receives love. It's the, you know, where your motivations and your intentions come from and your desires and all of those things, your beliefs, that's all in your soul. Pretty important point. And also very, the, you know, very important point, I'll say it again, is that no real change happens unless it's soul-based change. And that takes an emotional process or uh, an emotional experience to get to changing what is in your soul. So, you know, you can think things different, but that won't make, create real change in your life. So if you're like me and you looked at a lot of parenting books and you tried to get help because you felt pretty overwhelmed when you first had a child or you're even thinking about having a child and you're feeling pretty overwhelmed and you're looking and researching, I found that none of those books helped me personally because though I tried to implement certain strategies and certain things in them and I tried to do things like that, because the beliefs and feelings inside of my soul, my real, the real feelings I had about things I wasn't acknowledging and I wasn't being honest about, I couldn't actually make any shifts in my life, you know, intellectually. It's like affirmations. You can tell yourself that you're a wonderful person or that you're going to think positive and everything's great. But if you don't feel positive and you don't actually make an emotional shift and feel your way through why you're feeling so negative about things, which I suggest would be feeling quite angry and probably some fears and some sadness and various other emotions that you might need to feel. If you don't feel those things, then you're always going to have to be working really hard to, to actually you know, feel okay. And the reality is you don't. 
and that's where you need to start. The same applies to parenting. We need to find out where we are right now as a parent and then decide whether or not we want to change in a positive direction or a more loving direction or not. And that brings me to one of the most important parts of these, this you know, parenting principle um, course, if you like, or program, is that the main question that I found and the most important one to answer for yourself is, do I want to love? And I'm saying that in the first person, so you can ask it to yourself, but it's, do I want to love? Because if you don't, you need to figure out why not. But if you don't, then none of the things that I say in this, um, these presentations are going to really hit your heart and you're not going to want to act on them. Uh, love is the thing that is going to pull you through. And I'll describe more about what love is. It's not some uh, intangible concept. Love is like a real solid practical thing. And you know, and when I talk about love, I have to also talk about truth because love and truth go together. There's, you can't, you know, truth is always loving. And if you can be truthful with love, then that's really, really important. We'll talk quite a lot about intentions and desires and um, what I kind of call as getting real with yourself about yourself. And that can be sometimes a confronting process to give up your facade and what you want to believe about yourself and what you want to think about yourself and actually see yourself as God sees you. And I will um, talk a lot about God because in my experience, you can, you can do all of these things on your own efforts and you can use natural love in order to, um, you know, you can explore and experiment and find out more about love through your own efforts. But uh, to me, to me, it's taken a, that takes a lot more effort and time and energy and you've got to experiment a lot more and, and there's nothing wrong with that. That is one way to do it. For me, having God in the process means that you've got someone who knows every single thing about the world, the universe, myself, you, everyone. So you, if you can become sensitive and open enough in emotionally, then you can actually feel God and you can have a conversation with God via your feelings. And you can find out a lot of truth that way. Um, I found to find out about myself, I would pray a lot, which is like a longing to God to know. And I would long to know how God felt about me, which brought up a lot of emotions of how I actually feel about myself and how in disharmony that is with God. And also to gain truth about myself, like, well, okay, God, what I'm doing, you know, is what I'm doing loving. And God can give you an answer about that. So you can find out quite rapidly if you have a, um, you know, you grow a relationship with God and get answers to every single question there is in the universe. Also, because God has created all of humanity, God knows, you know, her creation's best. So I feel like probably going to the source of the creation is the best way to find out information. I haven't always been in that position and I still struggle sometimes to maintain a connection with God due to my own issues and injuries. So the next best thing I've found is people who've had a lot of experience with a relationship with God and uh, their principles that we'll be discussing over the course of these videos. And that is the teachings of divine truth um, and Jesus and Mary. So I feel like God superly got it covered. And then obviously when you've had a lot of experience and you've had a lot of, um, you know, you have a more connected relationship with God, which I trust that I will have in the future. But I have to say having external feedback from Jesus and Mary and having the teachings of divine truth to refer to and to even like begin to learn about what love is and trial and experiment and test in my own life for myself via my own experience has been the greatest gift I feel like I've ever received, to be honest. Without it, I don't feel that I would have even understand about what love was. I mean, before I heard the teachings of divine truth, I was clueless, absolutely clueless. And I'm still finding that some things that I feel like, no, this is a loving thing to do as I work through certain um, emotions in myself and as I learn more about God's, you know, I suppose we could call it God's way, which is God's love and God's truth, uh, God's laws, and so the way that, that love works in the universe. This is something that I'm, I suppose, being educated on. And for me, it's an ongoing process. I feel like it will be a forever process, but there is a point where we can be at one with God in the sense of love and we will act in the same manner as God does and be in agreement on what love means. So these presentations focus a lot on love and when I said love, love and truth, as well as some other qualities as well. 
that all have many, many principles involved in them that we'll talk about over the course of the, the presentations. I noticed many parents, um, when we become parents, we have these feelings towards our own families and parents and there's sort of a, either a rebellion of like, oh, I don't want to be like my parents, or we end up doing the same things that were done to us or the same things that happened to us in our childhood. Sometimes unwittingly, we're thinking we want to be different to our parents and we end up the same. And it's because we've inherited a whole lot of beliefs and feelings and had experiences in our own families and we're just acting out of those. So unless we make some soul-based changes, we're going to act with whatever we're at. And another like fact or truth that I've found to be really real is that it doesn't matter what you say to children or to anyone else for that matter. What you feel is the real you. That's the real conversation. That's what's the real dialogue. That's what's really happening. And as a parent, it's very, very important to, I, I mean, I feel like it's important for any person, um, but because these are focused on parenting, we'll be talking about parents, parents. But let's say any person to have your thoughts, your feelings, and your, you know, your actions all match up, then it's easy for other people to see what's going on. It's easy for you to see what's going on. It's honest, it's transparent, and you're being really truthful about what's happening. It's also the most loving way to be. Often this is not the case, and with children, you will notice that often children are responding, and, and sometimes, like I know when I first started and I hadn't discovered any truth about, about you know, God's truth on the matter of parenting, I'd be like, why are the children behaving in such a manner? Like, what is going on with them? And as I've come to learn more about God's truth, I'm like, oh no, what's the problem with me? Because the like children are these wonderful reflectors. They're just reflecting what's happening. Any unhealed emotion that is inside an adult in their presence, they're going to reflect it back. And as a parent, you have even more um, influence on those children. And the children are reflecting you perfectly. Like it is so perfect. Um, again, it's not necessarily the actions that they're taking, but the feelings that are brought up and exposed in you via whatever a child is doing, that's the thing that, is, that God's laws are trying to help you to see. So children are this beautiful gift to help us learn about love, basically. And it's not about using the children to learn about love, because if we were self-responsible adults and we really truly actually desired to love the children, we would be doing everything in our power to love love others, and in this case, children. Um, but often I found that it took having children in order to actually help me to be so overwhelmed with the, the experience and all of the things that I'd suppressed, I suppose, emotional issues and past trauma that I had personally had suppressed from my childhood and my life, the actions that I'd taken over the course of my life, they were all exposed and came up when I had children. And I, I, don't, I don't understand yet why exactly that happens, but it did. And maybe it's because you're so tired and you no longer can kind of like hold yourself together anymore and you're no longer getting your addictions met as much. And when I talk about addictions, I'm talking about physical, emotional, spiritual addictions that you might have. So for instance, you know, when things often got hard in my life, I'd withdraw or I'd go and do something that I enjoyed doing. When you have a child and they're very small, you can't just leave. Like, they need feeding and they need changing and they need to be looked after and it's, it feels often like your life is no longer your own and you, that's a confronting thing and it's particularly in the Western world when we're used to pretty much having what we want, we have instant gratification, we're getting all our addictions met. Suddenly you're looking after another person and you can't just get up and leave or you can't, you know, whatever your addictions are. A lot of the time there, if you're doing what's best for the child, they, you can't do those anymore. Well, you can, but I notice a lot of parents sort of go, well, hold on, I, I want to do what's best for my child, but then they give up things that they wanted to do, um, you know, addictively, and suddenly they're faced with their own selves because their addictions are no longer suppressing the emotion. So, yeah, so a bit of an aside, but I feel like having children is this wonderful gift to learn more about yourself and also to actually have the privilege of meeting a brand new soul in the world. And sadly, because of all of the past issues that most parents and most adults have not dealt with before they have children, 
we pass on a lot of our in, um, unhealed emotional injuries and our belief systems and all kinds of things. So children don't come in, if you like. They incarnate as a clean slate, but they rapidly absorb all of the injuries and beliefs and things that are out of harmony with love, if you like, from the environment. And they're absorbing that from the moment that they're conceived and starting to grow in the tummy. So that's, and it's like what I was talking about, the soul, they're like a little container. And so everything in the environment, they're like a little sponge. It's just all going in. There's no yet um, barriers in order to, from absorption. And so the children just absorb everything. The beauty is, is that they're created and they come out being fully emotionally expressive. Unless the environment already is like shutting them down. So I have noticed that in quite high violence environments, a lot of children will be very, very quiet and they won't, they learn very rapidly, even as tiny babies, to not actually express their emotions because it's, da it, it's dangerous for them and they respond to that. But most kids, they, you know, they yell and they scream and they cry and they really feel how they feel. And I'm encouraging you to do the same. <laughs> You're not going to be looked after by anyone doing it because you need to look after yourself. And that's where a relationship with God is really wonderful because you have a firm friend who's there all the time with you. And as I said in a previous video, God is your real parent. And you can go to God about anything and God can help you. So if, you, if, you, if you've got any issues with God, I really highly suggest you work through those as rapidly as possible. They'll also expose a lot of issues you have with your parents. Um, because mainly your issues with God are because of certain things that have happened with the authority figures in your life, which are your parents in the mat when, as you're growing up. And when you are, yeah, first, I suppose, coming to know God, a lot of those feelings come up with, with your parents. And if you can see that often the issues you have with God are really about your parents, it's quite a helpful way to, to do that. I like a helpful way to, to discover more about yourself. I notice as adults and when we take on the role of a parent, we often think that we're doing really loving things with our children or that we have the best way or the right way. Um, others of us feel completely clueless and that we've got no idea of what to do. And I know I personally gravitated towards other women who seemed to know what they were doing. Uh, since I've learnt is that they really didn't understand what they were doing. And I feel like a lot of mums and dads feel pretty clueless and they don't really know what to do. And there's a lot of gender dynamics that get exposed um, in when you start ha when you have children, both via the children, if you have you know different gender children, or even when you have the same gender children, they show you a lot about the fam the parent dynamic and the parent relationships. So these presentations will also uh, touch on relationships and because everything interweaves and you can't really separate it. You'll find that if you do um, soul-based work on yourself, that a lot of things like your relationships will, will change uh, with children, with your partner, with everybody. Some of you might not want that because you might like the codependence you have, but in the end, anything that is out of harmony with love from God's perspective, and I'm, when I speak about love, unless otherwise stipulated, I am talking about God's perspective. And yeah, anything out of harmony with God's version of love is going to be broken down and destroyed. And though that might seem, um, oh, I don't know, you might have some feelings about that. I did when I first heard that. Um, it's actually now I really feel like that's a really beautiful, loving thing because all the laws are trying to destroy what's out of harmony with love. And if you're humble to that process, you'll let all that go and you'll deal with all of that and feel through it, anything that comes up for you. And then you'll get to a place where you can start again from a foundation and basis of love. And that's how I feel about children now and having children, is that God is our real parent, which makes all of us brothers and sisters. And that even means that our children are like our little sister, or little brother when, when, we have, when we have them. And I'm saying our children, they're not our children. They are actually God's children. Each of us are God's children. But that brings me to the point of a lot of us feel like we own children and we don't. A lot of us feel like we love our children, but really, do we? Like there's a lot of things that we do to children that we would never accept to ourselves. Like, you know, how many times do you yell at a child or you see someone yelling at a child and you know that if the child was yelling at you, you'd probably be quite upset about that. So there's an issue of ethics, that, um, and ethics is a really wonderful way to actually start learning and gaining an education in love. 
and we'll talk, I'm going to talk specifically about ethics soon, um, just a little bit later on. But, you know, the other, another very good example is, say, hitting a child. If you hit another adult, that's assault. So why is that different with a child? The fact that we feel like it's okay to hit a child and the fact that we feel like it's okay to take violence out on a child, we need to look at what inside of us actually has that belief because from God's perspective and a love-based perspective, it's not okay any time to hit, 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 hit a child. And when we then justify it because they did something or because they made me feel something, all of that's also out of harmony with love and not taking responsibility for the fact and the truth that you actually have an emotion and you want to harm someone else rather than feel it. So there's a lot of responsibility issues that we'll be talking about. I really encourage you to not judge yourselves or to judge others for what has happened. This, the principles, you know, the Parenting Principles program is really about looking honestly at where you are now. And if you do hit your children, you do yell at your children or you do want to blame your children, own that. Like be honest, write it down, make yourself, have a journal or something and list all the behaviors and all the things you do. Because the more information you have and the more you can understand what you're doing right now, the more then you can start to explore, via, and I suggest emotionally rather than intellectually, but you might start intellectually, I did, and then over time have now explored things emotionally rather than, and that just means feeling how I feel about them. It's not like any um, complex or complicated thing. God's way is very, very simple and beautiful in my, in my opinion. So you really need to find out what you're doing right now and to do that you need to suspend judgment and not to, to do, you know, like, and suspend judgment of each other and, and others and be kind to one another. I wouldn't accept um, the, the unloving behavior anymore and I do suggest you stop if you are hitting your kids or you do yell at your kids all the time. I do suggest that you stop and just let yourself feel about if you don't do that then what happens. Because often we're taking these actions to prevent our own feelings about something. So you can start right there with that first experiment if you want. Um, and the main point of that, that is you're looking at yourself and you're trying to find out about yourself. Being truthful about yourself. So all of these things come back to you first. I noticed that a lot of us as adults want to blame others. Children do too, but they're reflecting their environment and they've learned that from somebody and looking at us <laughs> as parents, they've learned it from us. Or, for, you know, and also the whole world, there's a lot of blame that goes on and not a lot of self-reflection or self-responsibility taken for what we are doing or how we contribute to collective um, things that are happening in the world. So this is an opportunity to, one, come to know yourself, warts and all if you like, or from how God sees you. So, and that was um, one of my first prayers was like, okay, God, please can I see myself as you see me? Because that was my prayer of saying, okay, what am I actually like? Who am I? You know, let me see myself as I really am, not as I want to believe, not as what other people are telling me, because often they're just reflecting what I wanted to believe. But what am I truly like? And then it was like, well, okay, I had to address the issue of do I want to love? And I became very honest with that question. And I found out at the beginning that no, I didn't. I wanted to be loved. And when I say that, there were certain areas that maybe I was more desirous. But when things got hard, when um, other people were unkind, when other people were blaming or attacking, I didn't want to love very much at those times. I wanted them to change so that I didn't have to feel certain feelings of how it felt to be on the receiving end of those kind of feelings um, from someone else. And that is, um, yeah, a, a big part of this program is really answering that question honestly of, do you want to love? Because if you don't, you're not, as I said before, you're not going to change and you're not going to act any differently. Um, that's another principle. You only can change yourself. You can't change anybody else. You can't change your children. You can't change your partner, you can't change your friends, you can't change anyone else. You can only change yourself. You can inspire others to change. So by be it like, you know, becoming a more loving person, by treating people ethically, by um, being, you know, kind to others, by being honest and forthright, your influence can have a very, very, very positive impact on the world and everybody around you. 
And that's been my experience is by changing myself, then the impact on the family dynamic has also changed um, in a positive direction, a very positive direction in my experience of it's more truthful, I feel more connected and close to um, both the children and other adults in my life now. I feel, yeah, more, I have far more understanding about where I am not loving and not in harmony with love and where I'm not being truthful with myself or with others and where I am doing those things. Um, and to me, that uh, has helped my life become smoother, easier. Um, when I say easier, there's just not so much stress and worry in my life. And when I do get stressed or worried, it's usually about specific things. And I go, oh, okay, well, here I've got an issue where I'm wanting to kind of avoid a lot of stuff. So I prefer to worry and get kind of stressed out about that. And there's always reasons for that um, that are deeper than me, just what I said. But it's an indicator, if you like. It's a feedback system where I can see more about myself. So the Parenting Principles program is very much about, well, I sort of have touched on some, a number of very important um, issues. And those are, one, you can only change yourself. You cannot change others. So I wouldn't even go trying changing others. I just focus on changing you. And, and when I say changing you, you can change in an unloving direction. I don't recommend that course of action. It ends up in a lot of pain and suffering. I do recommend changing in a loving direction and or lo a loving and more truthful direction. And in my experience, that actually creates a lot more happiness in your life, as well as a whole lot of other benefits. I've also touched on how not, um, the only real change, so another sort of principle, is that the only real change is soul-based emotional change. If you do not go through an emotional experience and um, work through the emotional issue that is inside your soul and change that, no change will happen in your physical life. You will keep taking the same actions. You can try for a while and you might be very, like use your will in the sense of like, no, I'm going to make a behavioral change. And some people are very, like have very strong will and they do the behaviors. But under stress and under pressure and under certain circumstances, you will re revert back to the thing that you did previously unless you've made that soul-based emotional shift. So those are two very important things. The other thing is that we are, like, I'm going to talk about us as parents in, on the earth. As I mentioned, God is our real parent and we don't own children. They don't belong to us, even though there's a lot of feelings of that. I've had those feelings um, towards children. God is our real parent and God is our, the children in our care's real parent. For the sake of these presentations, I will be referring to earth parents as parents because that's the word we use on earth and it's much easier. I will be specific if I'm talking about our parent God or it in any other context. I've come to know that um, being a parent isn't what a lot of us believe in the world and I'm only discovering what a real parent does. So we'll touch on a bit about the, um, you know, the role that, of a parent or why God has made the provision for people to be able to parent on earth. And that I'm still discovering and exploring for myself, but um, Jesus and Mary have shared some quite lovely teachings via divine truth um, on some of the feelings God has and some of the responsibilities of parents. So I'll mention those in this video. Another principle um, that I've spoken about, which I feel is very important, is being loving and truthful and the importance of being truthful. And that is being, um, like we talked about previously, about there's God's truth, which is the absolute truth of any situation, what's actually happening. And then there's personal truth. And that's about you and what you're doing and how you feel and, and what's going on for you. Uh, so principle is that the more truthful you are with yourself, about yourself, and about what is happening in your life, the faster you're going to progress. Like God can work with us when we're honest and we're truthful. Um, if we're not and we want to be in a facade, which is lying, um, plain and simple, you know, if you're presenting a facade or a, a fabricated version of yourself to yourself or to others in the world, you're not being your real self. That's not your thoughts, feelings and actions matching up. That is you faking it. So when you do that, I mean, in my experience, I far prefer people to be themselves, even if that's what they judge is not very nice. Because it's real, you don't have to, it's like simpler, everyone, it's kind of like a relief. It's like in my family, 
there's a lot of facade and what is said people want you to believe, what is felt they completely are in denial of. And it's a very confusing place, for, particularly for children, to be in. But if you grow up in that kind of environment, it becomes very, very confusing as well as an adult because you want to, you sort of are believing what's being said while you're feeling a whole different set of things going on. And when you start actually raising the things that you're feeling, there's a whole lot of denial. And, and in my experience, a lot of things happened that weren't very nice or very kind. And no one wanted more truth. And that to me is a problem because I want to know the truth. I want to know what's happening. I want to know how people feel. And it's a relief for me when people are really honest and transparent. And I feel that the more that we can, if you don't have that same feeling towards truth, I do suggest that you work through whatever feelings and beliefs you have about truth. And I know so many parents who are untruthful with their kids. And I'm not talking, I'm talking about age appropriate um, sharing here, but I'm always honest with them. So if they ask me a direct question, I give them a direct answer. Um, you know, when they were very, very, very small, and they say, for instance, they did ask me about uh, sex and, and what was happening. I did give them a very truthful answer, but I didn't fill them in on all the details or all the experiences that I've had or all of that stuff because that's not, not appropriate. As they've got older and they're asking different questions and about different types of things and they're now starting to, you know, become more interested in certain things. And if we use sex as a... Um, an example, when they're very young, they're just reflecting me and their dad and about our beliefs and our feelings about all of that. So mainly it was to bring up emotions in, in their father and I about different stuff. Um, in, as they're getting older now, they're kind of curious about different things and they want to know, you know some of the particulars and stuff. So now we have open, frank conversations about that too, as an example. But I'm truthful with them about any question they have and I'm also truthful when I have no idea and I don't know. And one of the things I'm trying to, which is on a lot of things that they ask, they ask me some really uh, large questions that I don't know anything about. So what I'm trying to help them to do is to develop their understanding and of how to gain information and that they have a conscience, which is a direct truth channel, if you want, with God. And if you're, if you're sensitive enough emotionally, you can actually get answers immediately from God about whatever subject you want. And giving them, I suppose, the tools that if they want to experiment with, they can in order that they can gain their own information. I suppose intellectually, you could say it's Google, but with God, it's like the God channel <laughs> or the God URL. You can feel your way to, to, to gain an answer via God. You don't type it. <laughs> So this resource is for people who desire to become more loving in their lives um, or just desire to do something different and find a real way to change. Or it also might be for those of you who were like me when I first became a parent who are just completely overwhelmed and don't really know what to do. This resource is um, it's completely free. You're welcome to share it with anybody that you would like to. This resource is for people who, would like, who feel that they'd like to become more loving or they'd like to get to know themselves better. Um, as I said, you can apply the principles to any situation in your life, regardless if you're a parent or not. The focus, as I said, is mainly on parents and children and the dynamic between adults and children relationships. Again, it will also be a bit about adult-adult relationships because the children are reflecting the partner relationship as much as they're reflecting you, know, you individually. And so there's a lot of dynamics that need to be taken into consideration with that as well. Because as a couple, you affect what happens in your home. And, you know, um, in saying that, one party can choose to change and the other party doesn't have to. So you don't, you can't, uh, I don't go recommending forcing your partner to change uh, because it won't work. Because remember, one of the principles, you can only change yourself. You can't change others, but you can be a positive influence for change. So, yeah, that's a very important one because I know I've tried to change others and and the children, and I've been very invested in them changing. And that's something that I've been giving up over the last few years and coming to the realization that actually for someone to change, they've got to have a desire, like a soul-based or a heartfelt desire. And unless they do, they're not going to act. And it's very important to help teach children about desire and that they have their own desires and encourage those in order that they start experimenting and acting and seeking um, for to to you know to find answers and seeking to for information and acting on their desires. 
very damaging when we teach children not to do that. And some of you as adults may know that, like you may find it hard to make decisions or to act on your desires or to, to even, you know, have a desire. Um, these are all things that, that are, are important to, to discover about yourself. A lot of information will be in these videos. Um, you may need to watch them a number of times or just pause them and write down notes if, if you do. That's something that I find helpful because then I can refer back to the main points later and things like that. Yeah, so, so the resource for if you want to become more loving or say if your family, if you just are feeling completely overwhelmed, this is a place to begin. What I love about the teachings of divine truth and applying principles is that they're practical, they're down to earth, they're like so easy, you don't need any equipment, you don't need anyone else. It's up to you if you do it or you don't. There's an immediate feedback um, system. If you're sincere and you have a pure desire, it's answered immediately. If you don't, it's not. Um, also, if you have children, there's another feedback system, which is trying to help make God's laws a lot transparent for you. And, and there's God's laws, and that's the, a beautiful framework that God has created for, you, uh, for all of us to exist within. And the law of attraction is so anything that's happening in your life right now, you want. You are attraction, attracting. So anything you hear about, anything that happens, is, uh, you know, it might be part of a collective attraction or it might just be just a select um, one for you. They're all opportunities for you to feel something and to work through that issue in order that you can learn more about love. And that's how I feel like the world is geared. It's like we're just trying to teach us more about love. And we can go kicking and screaming through that process and have a lot of pain and suffering. And, you know, that is a choice and we can make that or you can make that. You know, I can make that choice. Or we can actually start to go, all right, well, life feels pretty bad right now, if it does for you. And I will give, you know, give, do some experiments and I will try and find out more about what it means to live in harmony with God's laws. And that means that, okay, I need to become a more loving person. And how do I do that? You know, you're going to probably have a myriad of questions. Um, I did. And I still do. And all of those questions, as I said, can be answered directly from God, or I do suggest going over to the divinetruth.com website, and there's a lot of information with a lot of answers on probably a lot of your questions, including parenting. And this resource is, yeah, just sort of like a foundational go-to, all right, here's some principles, do I want to explore them, let's have a go, let's do some experiments kind of place to be. And that's at the beginning of it. I'm hoping that it will expand. So if you've got questions, queries, um, things like that, please send them through. And I would love to um, um, respond via video to answer those um, if I can. Uh, if I can't, I'll let you know too. I may not be able to answer all of the questions that come through. I'll try and make um, them theme-based of, of anyone who does ask questions. And also that they could apply to a large number of people, not just um, one person specific, because I feel like that's the best way to, to do things. I'm also open to chatting to people one-on-one -on -one or to meeting with families if, if both parents were um, interested in learning more or you know, doing things together. I'd be very interested in working with a family in order to help them with certain principles and applying them to their um, specific situation. So if you're interested in that, please do let me know. The other important thing about this Parenting Principles program is that the principles can be applied to, as I've said a number of times, but I can't stress it enough, of to any situation. So rather than, um, like I've got some videos about my own personal experiences and what I did and all these kind of things, but the thing is, is that you may take the same actions that I took and not have the same results. And that's because you may have different motivations and different intentions to me and a different set, like a unique set of um, emotional injuries from your past, and you might have you might have different causes, even though you might have similar behaviour happening in your family, or in you know between you and your children, or you and your partner, or you and others in the world. Thing is, is that your soul may have different different things going on it than mine does, and that's why a principle is so important, and I think such a powerful tool to to discuss and understand and again principles you're not going to act on principles unless they're in your heart unless you've had an emotional experience of like wow okay to understand it when I first heard about principles I didn't really understand them I didn't understand how to apply them or what that meant or what that would look like 
now over time as I've worked through certain certain things I now when I say that I think I understood them to an extent after I'd felt a few things but I couldn't intellectually put them into words or say that that's what I was doing now I can see like for instance just being truthful all the time you know like the benefits of that and how by being truthful all the time you know things um, my life becomes smoother more loving and all this stuff so all I have to remember is like okay, what's the truth? Like, what's the truth that I feel about this situation? And then what is God's truth in this situation? And that's something, as I said before, if you have some issues with God, I do suggest sorting those out pretty quickly. Because if you're looking just for your truth on the situation, it might not be God's truth or the absolute truth on that situation. And then you're going to feel like, no, I'm right. That's, that's how it is. But it might not be from God's perspective, which means that then it's not actually in harmony with love, which means that then if you act on it, it's not going to have the results that you're expecting because it's actually unloving. And there's a whole shift that happens. It's like a reality shift from going from what my reality is and what I think and how I feel about things to starting to shift over to, well, hold on, how does God feel about this? What's God's reality? What's God's thoughts and feelings on this issue and this thought? And and what I'm doing in this action, this relationship, and this dynamic. And it's a very useful thing between partners or friends as well, if you're both interested in, in teachings of divine truth or God's truth. And even if you're not, but to seek out the absolute truth or God's truth about the matter. Because I notice a lot of couples fighting and a lot of couples disagreeing or a lot of couples feeling not close and connected. And you may not fight uh, overtly, but there's a lack of connection between a lot of couples and a, a lot of distance and a lot of unhappiness in relationships. And by seeking for what God's opinion is in the relationship, it helps because both of you need to say, yep, okay, this is how I feel. This is how I feel. But you're going to have a fight if it's in conflict with each other. And if you're in agreement and, and it's unloving, then you're going to, um, you know, probably have a codependent feeling about it and where you both agree and go, well, no, that is loving. But instead, like, you know, if you're having a, dis let's do the conflict one because it's a bit easier to see. If you're having a, you know, I think this is right and I think this is right. One of you might be right from God's perspective, but it's not about you being right. You go, okay, this is how I feel. This is how I feel. Take personal responsibility for that. And then if you both seek, well, what does God feel about this? What is the absolute truth about this issue? What would love do? What is, you know, what is loving and truthful for both parties? And love and truth always benefits many, like benefits all, really. And so if it's only benefiting you and you're just getting what you want and someone else at the expense of someone else, probably not loving. In fact, I'd say not loving. So it's worse like um, if you can have that sort of th um, intention to seek God's truth about a matter or absolute truth about a matter. And that means, you know, and also having the desire to love one another, which would mean that you would figure out why you were having that conflict with that person and find the cause of the conflict in yourself. And they would look if they, and if they were humble enough to do that in themselves and you were humble enough to do that in yourselves. Can you see how so many arguments just wouldn't, like happen because or they'd happen but they would be because you're trying to figure out what God's truth was rather than attack the other person and gain some power or attack the other person because you want to be right or attack the other person because they're being unkind to you you know whatever it is um, that you can have but uh, I just I just know for me I feel like relationships are these wonderful opportunities to learn more about love learn more about yourself come to know another person in a really close and connected way. And the fastest, rapidest way to do that is via being truthful, desiring to love, being humble, you know, taking some actions in order to do things. Uh, that principle, focusing on yourself, not in a narcissistic or self-absorbed way, but more when an, an, an attraction or interaction happens, looking firstly at yourself rather than blaming the other person. And then once you've you know, figured out what's going on for you, definitely examine the dynamic between you. Because you'll find that you have similar reactions with certain types of people. And then you'll begin to go, ah, oh, whenever like I've gone in the presence of an exceptionally arrogant person, these are the feelings I have. And then you'll be able to recognize sort of arrogance. Now, sometimes yeah, it, it takes certain development to get to that place. Because at first, often it just feels like, you know, you attract everyone who is. And sometimes people will be in certain, you know, will be, will act out a certain thing in some areas and maybe not in other areas. 
and in a relationship dynamic, most of the time, it's not, it, well, it's never just one party. There's always an interaction. And in most relationships, I just see as like a, a fight for power. And in some areas, one party is sort of wanting the upper or the superior ground, and then in some areas, the other one has it. And so there's this sort of like fight for power rather than being equals and rather than actually going, okay, well, what would God's truth say here? And then let's both work all through our issues so that we can have, be equal in this relationship from a love-based perspective. So love is, is key. Like love rules the world. Love, and, and when I'm talking about love, that's truth as well. And that's how God operates. All of God's laws are loving. All of the feedback systems are loving. So really, first step is getting an education in love. The best source of information, in fact, the only source of information I've found is the teachings of divine truth. And they have a whole education on love series. Um, there's a two thousand. They call them assistance groups, and there's a 2014, 2016, 2018, and a 2019 one. I think. Check that one, but I'll put some links in there anyway. And they are focused on getting an education in love. Like, what does that mean, and and how does God view that? And that information is very. Uh, I find it very interesting, and I haven't found another source of information that is that specific, that practical, or um, simple to understand and that you can apply immediately in your life. It doesn't mean that you'll find it necessarily feels easy to do it and to be sincere and have a pure desire to actually do it. Those are things you might need to develop. But as far as hearing what's being said, again, go if you go in with an open mind and you go in with an open heart, it will be a, um, I'm sure you will learn something. Yeah, if you put it into practice, guarantee it will change your life but you've got to actually do it for anything to change. So here's another principle. If you don't actually like take actions and do something, nothing's going to change. If you still, if you make the same decisions over and over and you keep acting in the same manner in the same way, nothing's going to change. So if your life is one way now and you're not very happy with it, do you have anything to lose by doing some experiments? I don't think so. <laughs> in my experience, uh, I had to get to real rock bottom where my life was really, really horrible. Like it felt, it felt horrible. On the outside, it, it probably didn't look that way. But inside, it was just, it was really, really horrible. Like I felt like I'd really, a lot of pain and it was starting to sort of suffer. Nothing sort of worked out. I was just exhausted, overwhelmed, tired, couldn't cope with my life and was just trying to find ways to get away from my life. And that's no way to live. I feel quite sad about that. But I watch a lot of us just doing that. You know, we have all different techniques and addictive ways we do it. So getting really busy or just, you know, sitting on the couch and doing nothing, um, you know, opting out of our lives, you know, withdrawing from our lives or doing so many things that we never have enough time to just stop and feel and reflect about what we, what we feel or what we think and what's happening in our lives. And when I say what we think, our thoughts are generated by what the feelings are inside of ourselves. So, you know, often we're thinking things either to avoid certain feelings or we're thinking things that are in harmony with our feelings, you know, and I suggest becoming more open and transparent with, at least with yourself about those things. I feel like one of the worst things that people can do is lie to themselves. No change can happen if you lie to yourself. So I encourage you to become honest, transparent people. Um, and if you've got a desire to pursue love, I hope you enjoy these videos.